Hi, hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This video is on ATP synthase. Yes, in the previous video, we were discussing about the photosynthesis and also we studied about the molecular configuration and supramolecular organization of molecular complexes or domains or assemblies. This ATP synthase, it is an enzyme as I used to mention if anything that ends with ASE means it is an enzyme. And this is also called as a complex uh, fifth, fifth complex. Uh, while we are studying about the electron, electron transport system where we studied about the Photosystem 1, photo, uh, cytochrome B6F and photosystem 2, right? So, next complex is ATP synthase or it, it, it is also ref, uh, referred as uh, a complex uh, 5, okay? Fifth complex. So, as you can see in the diagram, so this is where the ATP synthase is located. This is the exact location and orientation of the ATP synthase. So, what is the function of this ATP synthase? The function of the ATP synthase, as in the name indicates, it is going to synthesize the ATP. ATP is a energy molecule. The long form of ATP is adenosine triphosphate. Okay. Another name for the ATP synthase is F1, F0 ATPase. ATP is used by all living organisms, including you. Okay, that's right. Your body is producing ATP right now because you have a, uh, and you have a more than 15 trillion cells in your body and in each cell the ATP synthase. Okay, like um, there are about more than one in each cell. So, and are making ATP about a million ATP per minute. It's, that's correct million ATP per minute and it gives a lots of energy that gives a lots of energy that is the function of this ATP synthesis which is going to produce the ATP okay that is a energy molecule okay this ATP is also referred as it is a universal energy carrier or you can say it is a molecular currency and this ATP production this ATP production provides the energy for all the intracellular activities means the activities which is going to occur inside the cell inside our body so for that energy is needed so all that energy is provided by this ATP okay that is adenosine triphosphate now first we will look at the definition here ATP synthase is an enzyme located in the mitochondria and chloroplast that produces the energy currency of all the cells known as adenosine triphosphate that is ATP yes this is ATP synthase it is an enzyme and it is located in mitochondria and chloroplast means it is located in all animals mitochondria and also chloroplast means in plants okay and what is the function of this ATPase it produces the energy currency that is ATP or molecular currency of the cell that is ATP and next point ATP synthase is an F class pump yes it is an F class pump so for time being I am not going to explain this F class pump here because this is a different concept but uh, our, con our focus is on uh, studying the ATP synthase structure so, uh, but I will just give a basic to make uh, make it understand. This F-class pump, you are going to study this in the cellular organization, okay, where we are going to study about the membrane structure and its function. So, there we are going to study about this in detail. So, about there we are going to talk about the ion channels, pumps, okay, how the membrane is going to transport the ions from in and out of the cell membrane, okay. But this ATP synthase is an F-class pump, they are saying. F-class pumps are not, these actually helps in transfer of protons, from higher concentration to the lower con uh, lower concentration that is the function of the f class uh, pumps okay means f class pumps is reserved to transfer only protons atp synthase transport protons from their higher concentration region to their lower concentration region that is passively means they are going to transfer the energy from their higher concentration to the lower concentration that is passively, moving it from passively, not actively. For example, I think this is a cell membrane. If there is a protons here, okay, if there is a, these are the protons here. So, these protons are moving from, okay, and this is protons are less here. So, they are moving the protons from higher concentration to the lower concentration passively. Okay, this is, uh, the, here the protons are higher, here they are low. So, they are moving from higher concentration to lower concentration passively means this passive transport of proton is spontaneous okay and according to second law of thermodynamics the law of entropy a spontaneous process must be accomplished with degradation or release of energy so it is if it is a passive transport okay active transport means active transport which which requires energy passive transport is the one which is going to release the energy 
okay so as a uh, the transfer of these proteins through the atp synthesis is a passive transfer and it is a spontaneous so according to second uh, second law of thermodynamics that is law of entropy so this passive transport is going to release a energy that is called as free energy okay so uh, degradation or release of energy thus this proton releases energy during their passive transport and this free energy means this released energy of proton is used to couple adp and pi that is adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphate and synthesizes the atp this is how the atp is going to synthesize means adp plus pi inorganic uh, inorganic phosphate gives rise to adp atp so so to prepare this where is the energy comes from the energy is the free energy that is released during the transfer of these protons from higher concentration to the lower concentration that releases the free energy and this free energy is used to couple this adp and uh, inorganic phosphate to produce the atp okay now important point here atp synthesis is found in means where these atp synthesis is found as i mentioned before it is located in the mitochondria and uh, in plants it is in on the chloroplast exactly uh, uh, the atp synthesis is found on bacterial membrane and uh, in chloroplast where it is located it is located on the thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast C, chloroplast ct means chloroplast okay and it is also present in the inner mitochondrial membrane of the mitochondria so it is located on the inner mitochondrial membrane you, you know that mitochondria structure right there will be out outer membrane inner membrane and in, uh, and there is a uh, space uh, so it is present in the inner mitochondrial membrane of the mitochondria empty means mitochondria that's about the introduction part now we will move on to the structure of atp synthase so as you can see in the diagram which i have drawn here so this is a rough diagram i'm hoping this could help you to understand the concept so this atp synthase the structure of the atp synthase is like this okay and it is location is here it is present on the thylakoid membrane as we see why i am drawn it is located in mitochondria as well but as we are studying about the photosynthesis so uh, other pro proton uh, pot photosystem 1 uh, cytochrome b6 f and photosystem 2 all are uh, which are located on the thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast and we are studying about the photosynthesis that's why i am drawn this one uh, atp synthesis way which is present in the mitochondria and in chloroplast everything is same okay same structure same function but in in diagram i just mentioned thylakoid membrane that's it because we are studying about the photosynthesis uh, have a look on the diagram here okay now we we'll, now i will explain this structure atp synthase comprises two main proteins two main protein components are domains that is called as cf1 okay c it is represents the chloroplast in mitochondria it is just repre represented as f1 okay and uh, cf not or o and yeah not in the mitochondria and i would like to mention one point here if this is not zero okay it is a f not r f o okay that you have to remember don't call it as a zero it is a f not r f o okay now let's begin with the cf1 okay, as you can see in the diagram here this is the cf1 portion and this is the uh, f not uh, portion sorry f not portion and this is the f1 portion here now we are going to study about this portion here it is a peripheral domain so as you can see in the diagram it is a peripheral domain okay peripheral means this side okay this is the peripheral domain right so this is a peripheral domain means it is not uh, present inside the membrane it is present outside the membrane okay it is a peripheral region so it is a peripheral domain okay this f1 is a peripheral domain and it and it consists of five subunits the five subunits are alpha beta gamma delta and epsilon and this alpha are three in number and beta are also three in number and the rest gamma delta and epsilon epsilon are one one in number okay as you can see in the diagram you can see here you can find out alpha beta gamma delta and epsilon epsilon here okay now moving on to the next point and the three alpha and three beta subunits interact with each other in a alternating and circular fashion to form a hexameric ring so as you can see in the diagram these uh, so as i just mentioned mentioned three alpha are present and three beta are present right so these alpha and beta are present in a alternative manner so alpha beta alpha beta alpha beta this is the alternative form and it forms a hexameric ring hexa means six right so it is forms a hexameric ring 
ಅಂಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೀ ದ ಡಯಾಗ್ರಾಮ್ ನಾನು ಈ ಡಯಾಗ್ರಾಮ್ ನ ಯಾವ್ದಕ್ಕೆ ಹೋಲ್ಸಕ್ಕೆ ಇಷ್ಟಪಡ್ತೀನಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಯು ಜಸ್ಟ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಇದು ಬೀಸೋ ಕಲ್ಲು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರಲ್ಲ ಬೀಸೋ ಕಲ್ಲಲ್ಲಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಲೈಕ್ ದಾಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಬೀಸೋ ಕಲ್ಲು ಇರುತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಒನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ರೊಟೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ದ ಬೋತ್ ಕೆಳಗಿಂದ ಎರಡು ಕಲ್ಲು ರೊಟೇಟ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅಂಡ್ ಒಂದ್ ಸ್ಟಾಕ್ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅದು ರೊಟೇಟ್ ಆಗಕ್ಕೆ ಸೊ ನಾನು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ ಆಗಿ ಕಂಪೇರ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ಕೆ ಇಷ್ಟಪಡ್ತೀನಿ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ಬಿಸಿ ಕಲ್ಲು ಅಂತ ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಲ್ವಾ ಸೊ ಸೊ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಈಸಿ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ನೆನ್ಪು ಇಟ್ಕೊಡಕ್ಕೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ನಾನು ಮೆನ್ಶನ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ಕೆ ಇಷ್ಟಪಡ್ತೀನಿ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಅದು ಆ ತರ ಇದೆ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ನೀವು ಇವಾಗ ಕಲಿತಾ ಹೋದಂಗೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಗೆಟ್ ಟು ನೋ ಸೊ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಬೀಟ ಸಬ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಸಿಂಥಸೈಸಸ್ ಎ ಟಿ ಪಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಒನ್ ದೀಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಬೀಟ ಸಬ್ ಯುನಿಟ್ಸ್ ದೀಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಬೀಟ ಸಬ್ ಯುನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಒನ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಸಿಂಥಸೈಸಸ್ ದ ಎ ಟಿ ಪಿ ಓಕೆ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಗಾಮ ಡೆಲ್ಟ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಫ್ಲಾನ್ ಎಫ್ಲಾನ್ ಸಬ್ ಯುನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಕಂಬೈನ್ ಟು ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ದ ಸೆಂಟ್ರಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾಕ್ ದಟ್ ಇಂಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಸೀ ರಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಎಫ್ 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 ನಾಟ್ ರೀಸನ್ ಯಾಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಡಯಾಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಹಿಯರ್ so they as i mentioned these beta 3 are uh, synthesizes the atp okay these are the ones which go to synthesize the atp and rest of the subunits are domains that is gamma delta and epsilon these actually uh, combined to form the central stock this is the central stock as you can see here this combined to form a central stock this is the central stock please do observe the diagram here so that you will understand thoroughly so this is the central uh, stock and this central stock interacts with the c ring as you can see in the diagram this is the c ring okay these ones are going to interact with the c ring means think this is the c ring this is the c uh, ring for this c ring this is the central stock which is made up from the gamma delta and epsilon they are located they are fixed like this okay this is the central stock e diagram new this is the c ring which i am rotating the hand here this is the c ring and this is the central stock okay now next dot or f not f not okay it is an integral domain it is an integral domain here why it is a integral domain because it is embedded in the membrane if it is embedded embedded in the cells membrane as you can see in the um, diagram here see here so this is the uh, chloroplast membrane it is a thylakoid membrane right so it is located in the thylakoid membrane it is embedded in the membrane and this is the peripheral region okay because it is present outside the membrane this is present inside the membrane that is it is an integral domain okay and it is composed of three sub units that is a b c and a is one in number b is two in number c is about it may be 10 to 12 it varies it in some in atp synthesis it is 10 in some atp synthesis is it 12 so but the c uh, will be 9 to 12 okay so now we will understand with the diagram here f uh, not it has uh, three sub unit that is a uh, look at the diagram a and b two okay it acts like a stock here b connection okay and c c ring it is okay it is about 9 to 12 so nim uh, nimge answer why diagram nodi takshana nimge enadru imagination bartide nanage antu id nodi takshana ee cricket alli athwa yavadadru competitive sports alli trophy kodtar alva as you observed it somehow looks like that isn't it so i feel like that i don't know your opinion i'm feeling like that if you feel the same you can comment in the comment section and now this component acts as a proton channel okay and these components that is a b c a, these components means it is uh, uh, f not reason it is going to act as a proton channel it is uh, channel is, uh, this is nothing but it helps in the transport of proton okay that is those are called as proton channels which helps in the movement of protons from one region to the another region those are called as proton channels okay and next point the 9 to 12 c units arranged in a circular manner to form a ring like structure this ring is tightly linked to the to the one a sub unit and two b sub units as you can see in the diagram yes these c rings are arranged in a circular manner and that is linked by the a and b two okay and a sub unit acts as a mediator for the proton transfer between this c ring and surrounding environment outside the cell so this a sub unit it is going to act as a mediator for the transfer of proton from uh, transfer of protein between the c ring and the surrounding environment so this is acts as a mediator to it is acts as a mediator to transfer the electron from next and this cf1 and cf0 are connected by two ways now the question is that we have to learn because this is the one which is going to synthesize synthesize atp right so how it is going to synthesize and this f0 f0 reason and f1 are connected by how these are connected by two ways you already guys know this one way is just now i have mentioned Uh, this gamma epsilon and delta these will actually forms that uh, stock and it is inserted into the c ring that we know right then this is the one way of connecting right we will know the next way here 
So don't worry, I will explain one by one. So this F1 and F0 are connected by two ways. That is by central stock, second by peripheral or external, uh, external stock. First, central stock it comprises of gamma, epsilon subunits firmly attached to the C ring. So for in the enzyme row, enzyme rotor. Okay. So this F, uh, gamma and epsilon attached to the C ring. So that's how they are connected. And second one, the peripheral stock comprises the A, two B. And delta subunits and peripheral stock. This external connection is by the, this side. That is A and 2B and delta. These will connect these two F, F1 and F0 uh, part. Okay. That's how the in two ways they are connected. Yes, and these two ways of connections are very important. Okay. And this three beta subunits and ga, uh, gamma subunit and C ring. Uh, that actually forms the rotan. Then what is this rotan? Rotan is nothing but the rotatory ring. Rotan means these are the ones which are having the flexible to rotate. For example, you have, a, you have to look at the diagram here. So these three beta subunits and this gamma and this C ring. So that's why I know pencil is super dark agi draw madidini nodi. So the color is change here. So these are the ones which are rotating. So these are the ones which are rotating. This one C ring is rotating and this one uh, this stock gamma and uh, epsilon stock is rotating. And here in this case, three betas are rotating. Okay, so other rest of the subunits and all other subunits are stationary means stator means they are not moving all the rest of the things are means uh, subunits means alpha, okay, delta and uh, B and A. These are all are constant. They, they don't have any motions. They are stationary. That are, that's why they are called as stator. Now, all the other subunits are sta uh, stators. Okay, and this ATP synthase is world's most smallest motor. Uh, mechanics are just one motors gully there, alwa. So, all motors in our body, na living motor, uh, natural motor, anta hela dadra. Adrally, thumba smallest motor ya dandre ATP synthase. Okay. And now coming uh, function here. So, you guys such as bagya nodidvi, and also we talked about the, some of the important uh, points in the introduction part, and also we talked about the structure. Now, what is the function? I already mentioned, but I would like to mention it once again. The function of this ATP synthase is to transfer the protons. From higher concentration to the lower concentration, and which helps in the production of the ATP. So this ADP and plus inorganic phosphate combine to form the energy molecule that is ATP. And so this mechanism of synthesis. See the structure. Begin. I know. I should explain. Madi do. Here, the e diagram. E one do ATP synthesis. Yeah, there are synthesis. Madu te another na. I will explain that in another video. The mechanism of synthesis of this ATP. Uh, this video is going to help you all. And it's my pleasure to teach you all. Thanks for watching.